Light is mysterious. It's, it's confused some of the greatest scientists over the years. I mean, it's a particle and it's a wave, and even when you break it down to that, there's still more ways to describe it, and we still haven't fully described light. When I built my first burning laser, I, I was just 14, and here I had this device that could like light things on fire with just light. It feels like holding a lightning bolt in my hand. Utilizing just these fundamental properties of the universe to, to make these crazy contraptions. Like a bunch of science YouTubers, a lot of us have been dealing with these uh, suspensions and temporary bans on our channels. A lot of the people who do chemistry and science videos get flagged as being too dangerous. And in fact, if I were to get one more strike against my accounts, my channel would have been deleted. When you remove those kinds of videos, there's less kids that are gonna get interested in science. Some people like video games, and, and I like uh, raising moths with my spare time. And uh, I actually had this pointed out in a YouTube comment once, but someone said that moths are my spirit animal. And I, you know, at first I think, well, it's, you know, because I, I raise moths, you know, the simple explanation. But no, uh, moths are attracted to light, you know? So it's like, it, it's perfect, you know? Because, I mean, I love lasers, I love light, and, and I, I love moths. So it's like, a, it's a, a perfect, uh, it's a fitting spirit animal. Oh, did it stick? Yeah, okay. And generally, these these uh, these kinds of moths don't uh, they don't fly around unless uh, like it's their specific flight hours, like a certain time of the night. So they're not going to like fly straight into the laser beam and get destroyed, you know. Uh, my name is Drake Anthony, and I'm 25 years old, and I, I like to call myself a professional mad scientist. On YouTube, I go by Styropyro, and, and that's a name that I came up with when I was really young. But uh, since I've started posting videos, I've gotten over 100 million views actually, and. Uh, I'm coming up on uh, 500,000 subscribers, so it's, it's amazing the amount of viewership I've gotten in those years, and I would have never expected that when I started my channel. Now, anytime I'm gonna break out the high-powered lasers, I, I have to wear goggles. It's like, there are no exceptions there. I mean, you take one hit to the eyes and you're blind permanently. I mean, even just looking at the spot on the wall can damage your eyyes. So I put on these laser goggles and that prevents me from, uh, so if I ever take a direct hit, then it's gonna, it's gonna save me from that. And this is what saved my eyesight over the years. All right, so now I'm gonna power up this laser diode bank. So I'm gonna turn on my power supply. And now, you know, laser diodes are current control devices, so I'm I'm gonna crank up the current here and then let the power supply take the voltage. And there's the laser beam going. In fact, uh, I had one of these banks on my laser bazooka, and in fact, I actually had four of them hooked up and converged together. So this right here is my 200 watt laser bazooka. 200 watts! The power output on this thing is insane. Now, a 50 watt laser can do a lot of damage, but it really all comes down to how, how tight that beam is. I remember one time, I, I think I stuck an onion in the beam, and it, like, it just, you know, tore shit. I, I was really impressed with, with how much it cooked that onion, you know? Now, in the simplest laser design, you have some material that you dump energy into, and, and this is actually what's gonna produce light. So inside, there's a big crystal of ruby surrounded by a lamp and a, a shiny reflector. Then I have these two mirrors here, which allow the light to bounce back and forth and get that optical amplification. But one of these mirrors is going to be semi-transparent, so some of that light can escape, and you can get your laser beam. These are very, very special mirrors. You can't just stick any old regular mirrors there and expect it to work. In fact, this laser would annihilate that in one shot. Now, people ask me why I do this kind of stuff, and honestly, I I'm hardwired for this. I mean, I, I was interested in science ever since I was a, a tiny kid, and I was always wanting to do my own little experiments, and a lot of times it's just sheer cur curiosity that drives a lot of this stuff. It's just like, you know, what if? You know, what happens if I do this? And <laughs> back here is where I just, this is where the true junk piles up. You know, I got well, old microwaves over there, old TVs. Uh, I mean, my friends give me their old computers, their old microwaves, because I can always use the parts in it. So I just stack them up over there in that corner. I use a bunch of scrap stuff in my bills. I, I love using junk because not only is it cheap, but it can, it can give new purpose to, to old stuff that people are just throwing away or is just gonna rot in a landfill. In the heart of the gun are these uh, four 50-watt blue laser diode banks that I ripped out of some uh, broken DLP projectors that I scored off of eBay. This is my safety switch, which is really just a screwdriver jammed into a circuit breaker. Then, of course, I also decided to add a, a Lepidopter and amplifier, because you can't have a good laser gun without one of these. 
I grew up in Goodfield, Illinois, which is this tiny town in the middle of nowhere and a uh, population of 700 actually. But growing up in, in such a rural area was really good for, you know, especially learning about chemistry as a kid because, you know, the occasional explosion wouldn't, you know, send a whole fleet of cop cars coming out. Let's go blow this thing up. So when I was 12 years old, I uh, was learning about lasers in school. And I mean, it was, it was very basic stuff, but it really caught my interest. I, I wanted to learn more. The first time I got a burning laser to work, the first burning laser that I built, I mean, here I had this device that could like light things on fire with just light. It was, it just, you know, it was so crazy to me that I had this like futuristic device that you'd only see on movies just right here in front of me. And I put it together. All right, you guys all goggled up. Let me hit the switch and as you can tell, it's incredibly bright. It's super, super powerful. And, uh, and since, the, since I made a video on this, I actually ripped it apart and threw an even stronger laser diode in it, so it's closer to eight watts. I've made so many laser creations over the years. I've made so many, and, and most of the times they get torn down afterwards, but I mean, it's gotta be in the hundreds. My 13 kilojoule input ruby laser. Uh, my 200 watt laser bazooka, my laser shotgun, a cool laser drone that I build. You know, I've had defense contractors, you know, contact me and wanting me to work for them. And they've also had like the random rich guy who wants his own laser bazooka, which I obviously can't make for them. You know, not only is he legal, I'm, I'm not just going to start selling, you know, laser guns. These things are, are not toys, you know, they're, they're crazy. The, the power is, is on a scale that's hard to describe. If you look down here, you can see that there's a massive capacitor bank in here. And it's hard to convey the scale of how much energy this thing stores. Like, I, I mean, there's, it, while this thing is running, if you were to touch, I mean, if you were to touch like this electrode up here or, or all this drive circuitry over here, if you touch any of it while it's live, you're dead instantly. Like this thing, it probably has more than a hundred times uh, more energy than it takes to kill you. It's, it's you know, terrifying to operate. And, and this is what I use to uh, power up my, uh, my, the strongest laser that I've ever built, my, my Ruby laser. Now, if you're gonna publish anything online, you're gonna get haters. And of course, I have my share of haters out there. And probably one of the biggest complaints of them is that what I do is fake. They think that everything I made is like, you know, CGI, just some computer generated stuff. And they just think I'm a complete hoax. And, and it's funny because, you know, I'm making devices that are so cool that they think it's fake, you know? I, I wish I could bring them into my little lab here and show them just what a laser can actually do. I, I think they'd be completely blown away. Why should you even have something like this? <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> A lot of people think I shouldn't own devices as powerful, and in a sense, they're right. I mean, these powers are just on scales that are hard to imagine, you know, but it, your typical hobbyist is not gonna be able to make something like this. So it's, it's fun making, you know, pushing these limits even further. I want my viewers to know that science is number one on my channel. I never dove into any of these projects without any, you know, without extensive reading, without, uh, you know, incredible safety precautions. I, I never dove into this stuff blind. And, and that's why I still have my eyesight and that's why I haven't blown my hands off is because uh, I've respected everything along the way. So this laser gun right here, uh, it's not actually a real gun. It's just a, an airsoft gun that I gutted for the parts and then stuck a really powerful laser inside of it. So I just wired a switch to the trigger here. So when you push that, the laser beam comes on. Then I added a safety switch here just for good measure. Then the batteries here are actually going the outside. And man, these lithium ion batteries are great. Like I'm, I'm very thankful for them because it really beats those stupid uh, like nickel metal hydride or uh, you know, NICAD batteries that we used to have. So as you can tell, it's, it's very, very bright. Incredibly bright. When I first started working with lasers, there weren't green laser diodes available yet, so it's cool to see that progression in laser technology. Here we go. Lasers are a mix of like some of the greatest things that humans have come up with. I mean, you got you know engineering in it, you have quantum physics, you have chemistry, and, and just making the substrates that actually make the laser. You know, you got optics involved. It's just like this mix of all the best things that humans have ever come up with, and, and that's why the science behind them is, is so amazing. Now, uh, this is my uh, silver play button for getting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's funny the things that get taken down by uh, smaller content creators like me compared to some of the big guys. You know, like I had a video removed uh, about my laser bazooka. It got removed because supposedly the title was misleading, you know, because I called this laser bazooka a bazooka, I guess that was like clickbait or something. And But it really was. It was a giant laser gun that shot huge beams. This baby right here sits at 200 watts. 
which means it's 400 times over the most dangerous rating imposed by the FDA. This bazooka was a really fun project, you know? I mean, you can see all the scrap metal that I used on it. You might want to see that sticker, it's kind of funny. Not only will this kill you, it'll hurt the whole time you were dying. There's this weird double standard where, you know, you have some of these big YouTube, uh, YouTube producers who make these, like, make incredibly offensive things or just stupid and dangerous acts. But, you know, I can't call my laser gun a bazooka or, you know, I can't show a chemical reaction that spontaneously lights on fire, even though I talk about, you know, several minutes into the chemistry involved. These strikes are, uh, they're definitely limiting and they, and they limit what I can, pr what I can show. So I'm going to use a uh, Friedel Crafts acylation of a uh, phthalic anhydride with resorcinol, which should give me high yield of fluorescein in the end. So let's start the synthesis. I know how much hot sulfuric acid on the skin sucks, so that's why I've decided to uh, gear up. I think YouTube associates the chemistry with like you know bomb making or, or making drugs, and it's, it's very frustrating knowing that my channel could just get banned for uh, some reason that they don't even tell me why. It, it just overnight it could happen. I'm not even sure if YouTube is realizing this, but, but when they put these restrictions in place, they're limiting science education. And like, I know when I was growing up as a kid, uh, the internet was my main resource for learning new stuff. And, and I wasn't interested in things like, you know, dumping vinegar, you know, on baking soda and making a volcano. I wanted to see things, you know, light on fire, and I want to see awesome, cool, extreme science. So here I have a little bit of flash powder, and this is actually what they used to use in uh, old cameras to make really bright lights before they had flash bulbs. And it looks really, really cool when you hit it with a laser. All right, three, two, one. When you remove those kinds of videos, there's less kids that are gonna get interested in science. And then, and then in the future, there's less scientists out there. And it takes these little sparks and seeing, seeing something that's amazing to get somebody interested in something like this. The opportunities that a laser can be used for are, are endless. Like, there's talk about building a laser-powered spacecraft using the actual momentum of the light to repel a little spacecraft to, like, buzz other stars. Lasers are going to be used in everything in the future. I mean, they're already being used in medicine, but the new kinds of cancer treatments that they're going to be used for, and as our laser technology gets better, it could even be used in, like, nuclear fusion reactors. There's, there's this inertial confinement fusion. We take a, a giant laser beam that's from all sides and smash a little pellet of nuclear fuel to make it fuse. And I can't even imagine the, the kinds of things I'll be working on in the future, you know? And, the collaborations I might be doing, or you know, what companies I might be working with, or universities. But it's, I just see myself work with lasers, you know, until the day I die. It's just, it seems to be something that is just, you know, engraved into me. And uh, it just, you know, I, I love lasers, and I, I hope to work with them, you know, until the very end.